Hi, today we're going to look at adding and subtracting fractions. Now, when our fractions have matching denominators, so the numbers on the bottom are the same, it's super easy. Our denominator always stays the same. So we don't, if I've got 2 over 6 and 3 over 6, I don't actually add my denominators. My denominator stays as 6. All I do is I add the numbers on the top. So 2 plus 3 gives me 5. Pretty simple. Let's have a look at this one. So here I've got 5 over 7 plus 3 over 7. So matching denominators. So in the end, my denominator is going to stay as 7. All I do is I add my top numbers. So 5 plus 3 gives me 8. So my answer is 8 over 7. And it's perfectly fine if it comes out as an improper fraction. All right, let's have a look at subtracting. So again, I've got matching denominators. They're both over 12. I've got 4 over 12 minus 2 over 12. My denominators don't change. My answer is going to be over 12. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 away from 4. So 4 take away 2 gives me 2. So my answer is 2 over 12. And now down here, again, I've got matching denominators. You know what to do. My denominator stays the same. All I do is I work with the top numbers. So 15 take away 10 gives me 5. Now, it becomes tricky when your denominators don't match. So let's have a look at this question up here. So we've got 1 over 2 plus 3 over 5. Now my denominators do not match, so it means I can't actually add these until I turn these into equivalent fractions that have a matching denominator. So if you need a reminder on what equivalent fractions are, go back to that video about equivalent fractions. But what we're going to do basically is we want to find a number that both denominators fit inside. So we're looking for a number that 2 and 5 both fit into. So the best number that I can think of is 10, because 2 fits inside 10 and 5 fits inside 10 equally. So I want to turn this fraction into 1 over 10, into a fraction over 10, I don't mean the number 1 over 10. And I want this one to be a fraction over 10. Okay, so what do I have to do? I want to turn this half into one that's over 10. So I need to turn it into an equivalent fraction over 10. So what do I have to do to a 2 to turn it into a 10? What do I have to multiply it by? 2 times 5 gives me 10. So what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So if I'm multiplying the bottom by 5, I have to multiply the top by 5 as well. So 1 times 5 is 5. Okay, so my new equivalent fraction is 5 over 10. All right, let's do this one. Change colors. So here, I want to turn this fraction into 1 over, into a fraction that has a denominator of 10 as well. So how do I turn a 5 into a 10? What do I have to multiply it by? I have to multiply it by 2. So 5 times 2 gives me 10. Perfect. But if I'm multiplying the bottom by 2, I also have to multiply the top by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. All right, now my new fractions, they both have matching denominators, so I can add them now. Perfect. So I've got 5 over 10 plus 6 over 10. Because I'm running out of space over there, I'll just write it underneath. So I know my answer is going to be over 10. And all I'm doing is I'm adding my numerators. Just like with all the other examples, I'm only working with the numbers on the top. So 5 plus 6 gives me 11. All right, let's do another couple of these examples when we've got different denominators. All right, now let's do a couple of examples where we have different denominators. So here I've got 1 over 3 plus 5 over 9. Now I can't actually add them at the moment because they've got different denominators. So I need to find a number that both denominators fit inside, uh, or divide into equally, I should say, but fit inside, so that we can then work with this. So I need a number that 3 and 9 both fit inside. Ooh, OK, 9, 3 actually goes into 9. So 9 will be the perfect denominator. So 9 is going to be our chosen denominator because 3 goes into 9 and obviously 9 goes into 9. So I want this to have a denominator of 9 and this to have a denominator of 9. So
So what do I have to do to this fraction to turn it into one that has a denominator of 9? So if it's 1 over 3, how do I turn 3 into 9? What do I have to multiply it by? 3 times 3 equals 9. So I'm multiplying this whole fraction by 3. So if I'm timesing the bottom by 3, I'm also timesing the top by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. So this fraction is now 3 over 9. This one, well, it's already over 9. So 5 over 9. Cool. Now I've got 3 over 9 plus 5 over 9. My denominators match. So perfect. I can actually do this one. So I know that when I'm adding fractions, I don't actually add the denominators. This doesn't become over 18 or anything. My denominators stay the same. I'm just going to be adding the numbers on the top. So 3 plus 5 gives me 8. So this one will equal 8 over 9. Let's move over here. So I've got 2 over 3, take away 2 over 10. Can I do this at the moment? No way, because they've got different denominators. Okay, so I need to find a number that 3 and 10 fit inside nicely. Okay, so the best number that I can think of is 30. When in doubt, just multiply the numbers together and you know you're going to get a number that they'll go into. It actually doesn't really matter whether I choose, I could choose 60 um, and it'll all work out in the end. So long as both of your denominators fit inside that number, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so anyway, so I'm going to choose 30. 30 is going to be my magic number. So I want this to have a denominator of 30 and I also want this to have a denominator of 30 as well and it's subtraction. Okay, so what do I have to do to this fraction to turn it into one that has a denominator of 30? What do I have to multiply this denominator by to turn it into 30? So 3 times something gives me 30. 3 times 10. So I'm multiplying the bottom by 10 to give me 30. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm multiplying the top by 10 as well. So 2 times 10 gives me 20. Perfect. Now, what do I have to do to this fraction? to turn it into one that has a denominator of 30. So 10 times something gives me 30, 10 times 3. So 10 times 3 gives me 30, so whatever I do to the bottom, I've got to do to the top. So it means I'm multiplying that by 3 as well, so 2 times 3 gives me 6. Perfect. Now they've both got matching denominators, so I can actually do this subtraction now. I know that it's going to have a denominator of 30 in the end, so 20 take away 6 gives me 14. All right, now here, just because I'm feeling a bit, uh, feeling a bit rowdy, let's do one that has three fractions with different denominators. Ooh, a six, a four, and a three. Oh Lord, whatever can I do? That was lame, let's try that again. <laughs> All right, now because I'm feeling super brave, let's try one that has three fractions, all with different denominators. So here I've got 1 over 6, 3 over 4, and 2 over 3. So I've got three different denominators. Same deal, I need to find a magic number that all three numbers fit inside. Okay, so 6, 4, and 3, the best number that I can think of is 12, because 6 goes into 12 twice. Um, 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 3 goes into 12 4 times. So I'm going to turn each of these into fractions that have 12 as a denominator. So I want this to have a denominator of 12, and this one, and this one. Now I just need to think about what I need to do to each fraction to turn it into one that has a denominator of 12. So this one. Alright, it's got a denominator of 6. How do I turn 6 into 12? Well, times it by 2. So if I'm times in the bottom by 2, I'm times in the top by 2 as well. So 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, wasn't so hard, was it? Let's do the next one. This one has a denominator of 4. How do I turn a 4 into 12? I times it by 3. So if I'm times in the bottom by 3, I'm also timesing the top by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. Alright, now last one. Oh, I can open my text up. Okay, so this one here, I want it to also have a denominator of 12. So what do I have to do to it? It's got a denominator of 3. I turn it into a 12. 3 times 4 gives me 12, so I'm timesing it by 4. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 
So two fours are eight. Cool. All right, so now I've got three fractions. They've all got a denominator of 12. Happy, happy days. All I have to do now is add up the top numbers. I know before I even do any of the adding, I know it's going to have a denominator of 12 because I'm not actually adding 12 and 12 and 12. Denominators stay the same numbers. So 2 plus 9 gives me 11. 11 plus 8 gives me 19. And there we go. No matter how many fractions you have, it's totally possible for you to add them and subtract them. You just have to turn them into fractions that have the same denominator. Thank you for watching.